Can you hear me now? Okay. All right. All right. Well, let me repeat all that then. Good evening. We're glad you're here for uh, take two of Sienna Ranch's uh, Christmas Eve service. And for those here with us uh, present tonight and those watching at home, again, we wish you all a very Merry Christmas. We have a great evening in store as we will be singing together the Christmas songs. We'll be reading from the Word of God the story of, of Christmas. We'll also have some stories of individual sharing of God working in their lives to the glory of God. We'll also be taking communion together and uh, candlelight singing. So a great time. For those at home, if you would, if you have not already, if you would take uh, and, and this time to go ahead and prepare the elements for the Lord's Supper, if you would get the bread and the, the cup and some candles so that you could participate at home with us. On these five services of Advent, we've focused on the meta narrative, the Christian meta narrative, the story of the Bible. And, and so, of creation, the fall, redemption, restoration. And tonight, as we come on, on this Christmas Eve servant, we come to glory, to the glory of God. And the focus tonight will be on the glory of God. At Christmas, we see the glory of God in 
the earth. And you're going to hear uh, stories of the glory of God being evident, being present. And you yourselves may know that. But ultimately, Christmas points to the ultimate glory that awaits for us all uh, that is coming because we have a Savior in Jesus Christ. Will you bow your heads with me in prayer? Eternal God and our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for you and your love for us. How you love us tremendously, so much so that you sent your only son uh, to die on the cross, uh, to forgive us of our sins so that we can be reconciled to you. We thank you for the meaning of Christmas. And may we worship you tonight through word and through song. In the name of Jesus, we worship today. Amen. Come on, would you stand to your feet and join us as we sing? Joy to the world. Joy to the From generation to generation, our role is to hand down the gospel of Jesus Christ to all those who come behind us. This Christmas season, with that in mind, we ask the question, who is Jesus? And why is his birth so significant? At Christmas, we see the humility of God, and we see the glory of God. At Christmas, not only do we look back in appreciation, but we look forward in expectation. Jesus Christ is coming. He's coming back, and he's coming full of glory. Every knee will bow, and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I will exalt you, O my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His goodness no one can fathom. One generation commands your works to another. They tell you of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. 
so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. Let's pray. Father, we just praise you, God, and we just thank you that uh, the light has shined in the darkness. Father, thank you that you are the light of the world. We thank you for the glory of God that is manifested in, in the life of Jesus. We give you praise and we give you glory, for you are the same God from one generation to the next, and I thank you for your faithfulness, God, that you are faithful from one generation to the next, God. From thousands of years ago, you pursued your you have pursued your people you've loved us with an everlasting love lord you are faithful you are good and you are kind and we celebrate tonight that you came to be with us in the most humble circumstances and you've invited us into this un unbelievable relationship with you god you are so good and we are so un unworthy Thank you for, for your love, God. Thank you that your compassions are new every morning. You are a faithful God. We celebrate you tonight. May tonight be honoring and glorifying to your name, Jesus. Amen.
midst of it all, I will trust you, Lord. In the midst of it all, I will trust you, Jesus. In the midst of it all, I will put my trust in. share that song. It's not necessarily a Christmas song, but for the few little moments uh, that Mark has asked us to share about how God has revealed his glory in our lives, myself and Bill and him. And I share that song because that's kind of been my little theme uh, uh, going back to the beginning of the pandemic and circumstantially even before, but I got the song a little bit later because trust in God is what the glory of God moves me to do. When God shows up, does what he does in your circumstances, it moves you to action. So uh, with the foundation, let's read this passage from Second Luke, uh, I'm sorry, from Luke chapter 2, and we'll read three verses, verses 13, 14, and 15. It says, Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace, to those on whom his favor rest. Uh, when the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Just like those shepherds, God showed up in my life. And, and just like those shepherds, I was moved. Some of you know here at Sienna Ranch, two years ago, back in 2018, I was diagnosed with colon cancer. And I had no health insurance. And I certainly didn't have money to pay the kinds of fees that hospitals charge to do that kind of surgery. But God showed up. And in my situation, which I, I, God deals with us individually, every outcome is not the same. But in my situation, he gloriously moved by touching the hearts of people that express their love through making sure that I got that surgery and they gave their money which represents their time their time represents their work and their effort and that work and that effort and energy represents and is their life they gave their lives in a way to me so that I could continue to live and for me that was God showing up and I went from a place of being diagnosed with colon cancer and being fearful and anxious and wondering if I had got it all done before I checked out of here. Because when you hear the C word, something just comes over you and say, you better get it together. <laughs> uh, I went from that state of fear and anxiety to being hopeful because I saw God moving in a way and it brought me to tears. And I'm doing better about not starting crying every time I talk about it. I'm doing better now because by now I would have already broken down. But I thank God that he showed up. And like he showed up in the lives of these shepherds in their everyday situation. That was my everyday situation. I was expecting to go have a colonoscopy and the doctor say like he had said to many of my friends. Oh, we saw a couple of polyps. We burned them out and you're fine, Mr. Scott. But he came out with this look on his face. And some of you know that even more recently, uh, uh, as recent as uh, less than two months ago, I have got, received another diagnosis that's totally unrelated to that one, and the C word is involved. And so putting that in the context of what God did before, uh, the fear is not as great because I've seen God move on my behalf before. Now, I don't know how this is going to turn out. I believe the best. I believe that catching things early and how God has given me an insight to see inside the body and do miraculous things. Uh, but those, those men are doing what God has put in them. So it's God moving in and through them. But I do know that God shows up. And to me, as I understand the glory of God, the glory of God kind of is the opposite of death. If you think about it, Jesus came into the earth because when Adam and Eve sinned, God said, you're going to die. You're going to be separated from me. Sin brought death. 
And God said, I got to fix this, fix this, because I don't want my creation separated from me eternally. And so he sent his son. And when those angels came and announced to those shepherds, glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill toward men, those whom his favor is upon, they were announcing that the glory of God had been revealed and had been released into the earth to take care of death. And just like he sent his son 33 years later when Jesus was hanged on a cross and put into a tomb, the Bible says that Jesus was raised by the glory of the Father. And so when death shows up, God's glory shows up. He showed up in my life and added years to my life by attacking that thing that called itself going to take me out of here. Now, something's going to take us all out on this side, but I thank God that he fixed it where I could have some more years to do what I do and to try to please him to work in the earth and share what he's put in my life. God's glory shows up in the midst of whatever situation you're in. And that's why I sang the, that little song. I want to encourage you. Know that God is working on your behalf and his glory will show up wherever you are to lift you and to, to take care of that thing that's trying to destroy what God has put in you. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Awesome. Would you stand and sing with us as we do the first Noel? Second Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. What a great word to know that God is a God of comfort. You know, uh, anytime, you know, we experience brokenness in our life or loss or despair, 
anxiety, uh, fear, maybe anger, we naturally gravitate towards someone or something to try to find comfort in our life. And it's amazing that, uh, you know, sometimes we try to maybe take a, get out of that, that, you know, remove that thing that is causing us discomfort, or sometimes we want to remove ourselves from that discomfort. But what I find out about God is that God often speaks in the midst of that pain, in the midst of that situation, and comes alongside of us and comforts us in the middle of that. And I just wanted to share tonight uh, the, and how the glory of God was revealed to my family through the comfort of God. You know, uh, when I, Sunshine was in the ICU, uh, I spent uh, pretty much all day up there, and I get home about 9 o'clock at night. And I hadn't seen the boys all day, so, you know, for them it was great because they got to stay up late all night. And, um, you know, we'd stay up to about 11, 12 o'clock at midnight and, uh, you know, doing homework and stuff. But um, maybe not. But uh, we would actually uh, read a Bible story, pray, and then watch a movie. Sound like a good deal. You know, pray, read the Bible, and watch Star Wars. And it was real biblical. But um, uh, we have been reading the Bible. We've been reading the Bible already up at that time. And it just so happened that when this all went down, that we had just started the story of Joseph in the Old Testament. And that story we'll preach. And night after night, as we looked at the story of Joseph, how this guy was sold by his brothers. Um, he's, he's a slave. Now he's in Egypt. He's in another country, distant from his family. He's alone. Um, he gets falsely accused. He's in prison. And time after time, scene after scene, all these things are happening to this guy. And we kept, and we would stop and we'd talk about it and say, you wonder if he, if he was maybe questioning where was God in the midst of this? Where, maybe he, was, he thought God had abandoned him. The fear, the, the anxiety, all those things that he could have experienced. And, but as we saw through the story that God was actually right there with him through the whole time. And, of course, we knew the end of the story. We had already known that God, it was all part of God's purpose and all God's plan to actually position Joseph in a place that God can work out his plan for his people. And as we would go through that story, we would talk about, listen, we don't know why this happened to mommy. We don't know what God has in store, but we know this, that the same God that was with Joseph is the same God that is with us. And we found great comfort in the word of God, in the story of God. And just like Joseph, that God had a plan and a purpose. We don't know what it will look like, but God has a plan and God has a purpose. And just as much as God was telling a story through the life of Joseph, God was telling a story through our family. And that was great, great comfort and rest and assure. We, I thank God for his word. So not only did we find comfort in the word of God, but we found comfort in the body of Christ. You know, I love how it says that the God of all comfort comes alongside you, and he often comes alongside us through the people of God. Yes, and um, I should share this one instance. Um, when Sunshine was life lighted to Methodist in the med center, the next day she had an angiogram, and they were hoping to hopefully be able to fix the ruptured aneurysm through the angiogram. That was our hope, and that was our prayer. The doctor came out after surgery, and uh, it was her, such as mother and I were standing there, and he explained to us that they found the, the aneurysm that was ruptured, they know that it's location, but it's too dangerous to do the angiogram, and they're going to have to have major brain surgery the next day. And he said, this is very serious. This is a 50% survival rate, and a lot of people die after surgery. Not a very comforting word, to say the least, in that moment. I, it, I felt like somebody had just punched me in the stomach. And, I mean, everything just changed. I wouldn't say that my faith was rattled, but it's like, hey, tropical storm, hurricane one's coming. Okay, now hurricane five's coming. It just, it just everything changed, and as we uh, got together with her family, her sisters, um, and Chris Spence uh, was with us, and as we walked back to the ICU, I'm not sure that anybody said a word uh, during that time, and as we're in the waiting room in the ICU, I stepped out over by the elevators, kind of by this window, and I'm just kind of walking around, just processing everything that's going on, and, and Chris Spence came out there, and he walked up to me, and he says, man, is there anything I can do for you? I said, man, I, I don't know, and uh, he just put his hand on my shoulder. And I could see even in his eyes the, the distress. And he goes, man, we just need God to comfort us right now. And in that moment, my phone rang. And it was Dr. Miriam Hall, neurologist here at the church. I get on the phone with her and I explain to her what's going on. And she says, listen, I've been involved. She, she's never performed the surgeries, but I, she knew all about the surgery. She's cared for people that have had the same surgery in the ICU, she knew all about it. She walked me through what was going to happen, and she said, we, I've never seen anybody die from the surgery. I think that you should be a little bit more hopeful. I, you know, she gave me, what did she say? She said, I would have um, uh, uh, optimistic but cautious. 
And I just remember thinking in that moment, she could have called me the day before, she could have called me the next day, but she called me the moment Chris Spence put his hand on my shoulder and said, we need God to comfort us. And boom, I felt God just sent a message. He sent a message. The God of all comfort. And even though we didn't know yet what the outcome was, me, it just made me say, surely God is here. Surely God is here. And it gave me great confidence in knowing that God was here and that God was present. And I thank you, the church, and those of you that are maybe even be watching online. My family is so deeply um, grateful for the love and the support that you provided for our family. Um, it, is, it is unbelievable. And we just want to celebrate today. We want to celebrate with everyone here that God is surely with us. Amen. Amen. Your feet, stand to your feet. Let me read from the Word of God the story of, of Christmas. And as we look at this, we see that this story of Christmas, of Jesus' birth, is so simple and yet also at the same time so very significant. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor in Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. And he went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. 
And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths, placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the end. And thus we have the simple story of the, of the birth of Jesus Christ. It's so simple, and yet it is also so significant. Have you thought about that? Right afterwards, we see the significance and the holiness of the moment because, as, as Oliver said earlier, we, we see that there were shepherds out in the fields watching their sheep, and suddenly an angel appeared to them and said, I bring you good news of great joy that shall be for all people, for today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you, and you'll find him wrapped in cloth, lying in a manger, so significant and yet so profound. And then right after that, what happens? A host of heavenly angels appear on that site at that very time, and they say this, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, shalom, wholeness, completeness, on whom God's favor rests. And so we see the simplicity and the significance with the glory present at that very time. I've wondered at times what it would be like to see down from heaven, if we could see down from heaven. And I don't know. I think they're probably too busy up there. Or, or if they did, it's a reality TV show, what's going on down here. Oh, those silly people right now and, and, uh, and what, what they are doing. But um, those angels definitely saw down. And they, they saw the dilemma. They saw the holy God who loved the people on the earth. And they saw sinful mankind separated from God. And in the, how will man and God be reconciled? And when that one angel came down that announced that uh, the Savior had been born, they, they burst forth. They couldn't retain themselves. They couldn't hold themselves. They, they came exploding right into earth. It's like this. I don't know, you know, God uses the physical to reveal the spiritual, and, and this is a, uh, a little different from that, but on October the 9th of this year, at Kyle Field, there was a football game, and the Texas A&M Aggies played against Alabama, the Crimson Tide. Alabama, the defending national champions at that time, Alabama undefeated at that time. Um, Alabama was ranked number one in the, in the nation, in the NCAA, and then... As time ran out, Seth Small kicked a 28-yard field goal right through the uprights, and A&M won 41 to 38. And then the result was that 12th man, that stadium filled with people at Kyle Field, just flooded onto the the field, and they celebrated. There, there was glory to their team. They had won, and they were victorious. The SEC fined A&M $100,000 the next week because of that. And the Aggies said, it was worth it. That's what the angels did when they saw what God was doing in the earth. They couldn't be held back in heaven, and they came right into earth. And they said, glory, look what was happening here. And a baby. And a baby. How insignificant it would seem to anybody that people didn't even realize what was going on. And yet God was work at work at that very time. We've talked about the significance and the glory of God being present in the difficult moments of our lives as we face cancer or disease, or as our family is going through difficulties. And God helps us through those times, and his glory is evident. But God's glory is also evident in death. And he showed me that. You know, last year we didn't have a Christmas Eve service. We, we recorded everything and we broadcast it online. But two years ago, we held a Christmas Eve service here. And just a few days before that, on December the 20th of 2019, my mom passed away. And the very next time that I preached was on Christmas Eve. And I talked about the hope that we have in Jesus Christ because a Savior came into the world to defeat sin and to defeat death. And then, you know, God did something that Christmas Eve service that um, 
I think it was, it was very special. Just He was showing off. He was being God. But we're, we're having this service. And right there in the back row in the corner, my son Brian, they're not there right now. They turn around. <laughs> but they, I remember the seats. They were sitting right back there. My son Brian and his wife Deborah were there. And Avery at that time was four. And Bella was two. And uh, Madeline was just less than two months old. And Bella, you know, uh, she was, her dad was holding her. And um, Brian goes to Deborah and says, uh, Bella wants to go see Baba. Bella's the one who named me Baba. Everybody else calls me a different name, but, but uh, Bella named me Baba. And, and Deborah goes, oh, go ahead and let him go. He's not doing anything. And so I was standing up here while we were taking communion as we're getting ready to, to do. And families were coming up, and I was just overseeing and making sure every, everything was okay. And so this two-year-old, she had just turned two the month before. And she walked down that aisle, came in the back, came to the center, and walked halfway down the center, and then she stopped, and she froze, and she was just watching to see my reaction, and I didn't see her. I was watching here and looking at, and I was panning through the, uh, the audience to make sure everything was okay and indicating who to come next to take communion, and then all of a sudden, I noticed her. I noticed Bella there, and I smiled, and I opened wide my arms to her, and she smiled, and she came running down to me, and I picked her up, and I held her, and the whole time that I'm standing up here, I held Bella, and I loved it. And uh, when we took communion, when our family came down, we took communion, but I'm holding Bella. And then we sit on that front row, and we're singing the songs, and we're holding the candles, and then this was what God showed me at that time, through the the face of that two-year-old, that two-year-old who was coming to a Christmas Eve service for the very first time, and she is hearing the beautiful, at that time the the church was full, and she's hearing the beautiful songs that we're singing, this chorus is just resounding, and this beautiful sound, she had never heard anything like that before, and she's just smiling, and she's looking around, and she's seeing everybody holding the candles, and the, the flames were just dancing, and she is watching And she's just taking all in, and she is in awe. And then I had that impression. That was my mom. My mom, as she walked down towards those, towards that gate, and paused there, and the arms of Jesus opened wide. And she ran into those arms, and he held her tight, and he held her secure. And then she's looking around, and she's gazing around, and she's seeing the glory of God all around. She is in awe. She has never seen anything like that at all. And so we see that the birth of Jesus Christ, the glory that was evident at the birth of Jesus, is a foretaste. It's a preview of the glory that awaits Because a Savior came into this world for you and I. We have a Savior when our faith is in Jesus Christ. When we trust him in life and we trust him in death. Our hope is secure and he guides and he walks with us. And we get glimpses from time to time of the glory of God. Knowing that one day that's where we will live eternally each and every day. In the midst of of the glory of God. We have a Savior in Jesus Christ. Right now, Danielle is going to sing a song that she wrote, Glory to Glory.
going to prepare to take communion at this time. And uh, what we, is the custom of at Sienna Ranch on, on Christmas Eve, is we come forward as families. And so I would encourage you to come together as your family and, and, and we'll come to one of the tables and we'll start from the front and, and, and go back to the back. And there are instructions upon each table. Uh, you pick a leader, a spiritual leader of your group to lead your group. And um, for those that their faith is in Christ already and they've been baptized, that uh, take the elements that are there and we have them where they're safe now and they're wrapped. And so if you would take those and uh, first take the bread and, and the leader can say, with this, um, this is the body of Christ, do this in remembrance of me, take and eat. And there are instructions on there. And then with the cup, this is the cup of the new covenant. Uh, drink of it, all of you. And then after that, if the spiritual leader would say a prayer of blessing over the family, then following that, light your candles and go back and be seated. And when everybody has uh, completed with communion, uh, we will sing together and, uh, and we will dismiss. Let me pray. Father, again, we thank you so much for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He went from, uh, the, from the manger uh, to the cross to the throne, where Jesus Christ rules and reigns today. And like those angels said, that you have come and you have, um, you have given us peace, shalom, and we, that will be realized and that will be fulfilled ultimately. And each and every day, may we sing the glory of with the angels and give you glory uh, for you. As we take communion, may we remember what you've done for each and every one of us. In the name of Jesus, we live. Amen. And so right now, I believe the Falk family are going to come, and Oliver Scott, and if the Stromats would come, and if over here, if, uh, Pat, if you'd like to come forward. Okay.
we give you all the glory. 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 We Christ the Lord. For you alone. For you alone. face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you. Yes. And may he give you peace. Shalom. Merry Christmas. God bless you.